Hey guys, my name is Nick and welcome back to the channel and in this video we are continuing on the Warlord Titan project video number three and we are looking at an update on where I've got to with the torso, the legs and then we're going to go into some weapon assembly, uh, mainly the shoulder mounted cannons and we'll get on with those, how those are going together, uh, what materials I'm using to put them together because the joins are pretty ropey uh, on initial inspection and test fit, so there's going to be a lot of filling uh, a lot of uh, cutting of parts and all that kind of stuff that typically goes with any forge world kit. So let's get straight into the video. Now before I start doing my voiceover commentary, I do have to apologise for any dodgy background noise going on. The uh, council in their infinite wisdom are resurfacing all the pavements in my road. And this, uh, my hobby studio faces that road. So there's a lot of background noise going on. So if my microphone does pick that up, uh, I apologise now. So let's take a look at where we are with the torso. As you can see, the full box section is now assembled with the uh, shoulder parts all kind of attached and then all of the power cells and everything else um, all across the top. So the box section is now fully done. Now I know a lot of people that have done their Warlords have integrated LED systems and speaker systems and all that kind of stuff. Um, I've not bothered to be honest, um, but maybe that's just lazy and maybe my lack of electronic skills, I, I don't really know. but. To me, this is not going to get used very often. It's going to sit on a shelf uh, or in a box. And uh, yeah, it seemed to be a bit pointless to spend all that time and effort doing the electronics. So from the leg perspective then, each leg is kind of assembled without the toes because I don't know the position of the toes just yet. And then as you can see, the hip joints aren't fully glued, but they are pinned all the way across, ready for some JB weld a bit later on. And as you can see, that torso, when it goes on top, you know, completely takes it out of the camera angle that I've got going on here. It is massive. So that's the update on the legs and the body. So what we're going to do now is cover the build of the laser destroyers, which are the turret or carapace mounted weapons. At the moment, uh, Forge would only do these and the apocalyptic missile launchers. I do have those apocalyptic missile launchers as well. But we're going to go through um, how I've built these and, and where we've got to so far. So the laser um, destroyers are multi-part, as you can see, and I've put uh, the heatsink and the barrel section together on at least one of these so far. And then we're going to show you how wobbly that actual fit is. And I, I've trimmed this down and cut it and filed it so many times, and I still end up with not the perfect flush fit. And as you can see there, what I've done is I've scored each of those sections to accept glue and JB Weld a little bit nicer. Always score the sides that you're going to be gluing. To put the barrels in then, what I'm going to be doing is pinning. These are three millimeter brass rod pins. And all I've done is correspondingly uh, drill the other end of these. And I'll be showing you um, how I do that on the second one as well. So it's kind of a bit of a mixed build really. So those barrels all fit kind of snugly. And there is a small triangular section which holds the barrels right at the very end and forms a little bit of nice separation once I get that in the right position that is. It's a little bit difficult to hold one handed whilst trying to do that so it's easier to assemble. And then we've got the, uh, the shoulder mounted pivot section and then we have some pistons and you can put those in variable positions so you can adjust the elevation of the destroyer weapons uh, to be pointing a little bit more upwards or a little bit more forwards depending on your taste. If you were really clever, you could do uh, pins in all three sections of that and have them fully movable. But again, not really my style to make it all fully movable. I'd rather just have it in one position because it really makes no difference. Plus, if you were to do that, then you'd have to make some kind of rubberized flexible hose rather than these, um, these resin pieces which bolt onto the side. Depending what position you put that laser gun in, you will have to heat bend those cables. Uh, there's not a lot of giving them, so once you've got it into the position you want, uh, you can heat it, hair dryer it, hot water it, whatever, just to stretch those resin cables to meet the position that you require. Now you may notice this video is running in two times normal speed, otherwise the video would be about an hour long. I've managed to shrink it down to about 30 minutes. As you can see, the weapon is 13 berserkers long. That's my new official measurement term. So uh just happened to be on the side of... Uh, the table there before I was measuring. So what I'm going to do is finish off this one that was sort of partially started and then we'll do the other one pretty much from scratch in this video so you can see exactly what's going on. Now that little um, piece that holds the barrel separators, 
It only has one sort of locking lug in it, which is for the top barrel. But all three um, weapon barrels come with three lugs. So you have to remove two of those lugs. It doesn't really matter which two you use, but just keep the lug on the top one and then the little uh, little separator piece will fit on one and then it will allow it to connect to the other two. So it's a bit of a weird one. I don't know why that was the case. I would have expected lugs on all three. Now this is the magic glue. Uh, it's not really glue. It is a cold weld solution, a JB weld. Um, it's been sat in the cupboard a while, so the lid's a bit tough. Uh, so it's a two-part weld, cold weld solution. So it comes in a sort of a grey and a black, and you mix them together and it forms a light grey paste. And this stuff holds car parts together. It is tremendous. And when you're working with these massive uh, pieces of resin like this, super glue probably won't cut it long term. It will begin to uh, separate and will begin to cause breakage. So in my opinion, the uh, best solution is JB Weld. And you can use super glue in some of the smaller sections. So you'll notice that I will use super glue on that uh, barrel separator. But on the actual barrels themselves, I'll take a piece of this, apply it to the pins. And then when you push the, uh, the pins in, it will sort of bulge out. And then you can use that to, uh, uh, use that to glue the barrels in. Now this stuff does make a mess. If you do get it on your clothes, your clothes are ruined. So... Uh, Try and either wear old clothes or overalls or something that you don't mind if you do end up uh, getting some of this weld stuff where you don't want it because it does stick pretty much to anything. Now if you've ever done any uh, cake frosting or cake icing, uh, your skills will be tested here as you apply the JB Weld. Just try and keep it off your fingers because it will go everywhere and just double check that it's not super corrosive and going to melt your, melt your hands. But once you... Uh, happy that it's all good then you can just start pushing these barrels into play now really this stuff takes about 24 hours to fully go off it does sort of harden after about 30 minutes but you really want to leave it a good overnight before um, before you start painting or or cleaning or anything else that you're going to do to it now these parts are all fairly well cleaned up so i've sanded and filed and scraped and everything else so most of the mold lines are gone there are still a couple kicking around but none of the parts have been wafted in soapy water yet, so that will happen after the assembly. So once these are all put together, they will get a soapy water warm bath and a toothbrush scrub before applying the primer coat. So you can see here that I'm using super glue on that little end piece because the JB Weld would be a mess. And then just using the weld just at the uh, point of mounting where it goes onto the weapon uh, system itself. Now, this is a little bit fiddly and you need to sort of push it in and, and wiggle it around a little bit and eventually you'll get it all lined up. So I just had to do a little bit off camera there because it was just, you know, I couldn't keep my hands in the right position so you guys can see it on camera. But as you can see, all I've done is attach the other barrel and all we need to do now is make sure we keep those barrels kept together without having to hold it manually. So uh, as I said, you know, you want to keep it for 24 hours or so. So all I've done is use some elastic bands here uh, to hold all the barrels together and then sort of hold them towards the uh, the main weapon mount itself as well. So a couple of longer elastic bands. And we can leave that one in its entirety now to start, uh, start drying and start welding itself. And while that happens, we can now work on the second one. As I said earlier, what you need to do is really score some of these surfaces just to give it a little bit more bind. You know, those flat, smooth resin surfaces aren't great for any kind of adhesive so make sure you give them a good scrape and then score into them to give it a little bit more purchase so that's that's exactly what I do with all of these large flat resin surfaces as I showed earlier these these pieces are a little bit wobbly and in order to make sure that you can press these together what you need to use is some clamps which if you go and check your clamps, make sure that the pieces fit first, otherwise you're going to be wandering around holding two pieces of resin together and then twiddling your thumbs because yeah, none of your, uh, your, your devices are going to hold them together. So brainwave time, we come up with this idea and these are very long zip ties or cable ties. And this seemed to be the best way of holding these together. So all I need to do now is apply some JB Weld to these sections, which I've got a little bit of uh, ready to go here. Let's uh, mix that up. 
and then use the cable ties to hold the two sections together so I haven't got to hold, stand there with my hands holding the two parts. Again, a little bit fiddly trying to get the uh, cable ties to into the right position, but a little bit of trial and error and we're all good. Now I'm trying not to edit this video too much so that you do see the pain and process almost in its entirety. There's a couple of sections where I do edit where I have to go off camera just for the awkwardness factor of trying to do this over a desk when sometimes you need to be a bit more closer to the action with your eyes and you know just operate it a little bit uh, closer to the body and that's a bit different, difficult for the camera. Again practicing your uh, icing or your uh, your, your cake frosting technique here, just make sure you get a nice coverage of that JB Weld. You don't want to go over the top because it will spill out and it is a pain to sort of cut and remove. So you just want it enough so that when you push these parts together it fills some of those gaps. Now right at the start of the video when I showed you these two pieces rocking together, that's what you're trying to eliminate as well as use the binding nature of the, of the cold weld. So once we're ready to go, we can uh, get these two pieces squished together just as a building truck turns up outside the house yeah move on and then once we've got that fully aligned in the position that we need it to be we can now fiddle around with this uh, this cable tie, the ziplock uh, solution in order to hold the pieces together and this is the result so what I've done is done that end-to-end -end piece of uh, cable tie and I've also done one round the top as well and that's going to hold the two pieces exactly where I need them to be without having to mess around with my hands holding them for the next sort of 24 hours which would be a bit tedious. So we can now move on and start uh, looking at the barrels. So what we're going to do is get a 3mm drill because that will match your 3mm brass rod. And as you see I've got a pin vise drill here and pin vices are not really good for doing this kind of thing. So you know I just sort of show you here that you could be here for hours trying to drill out you know sort of one and a half two centimeters worth of, of resin so what we need is a Dremel now mine is a mains powered Dremel rather than a battery one which means that it's got superb torque and doesn't run out of battery and all that kind of stuff and what we can do now is make an utter mess everywhere and uh, use the Dremel to drill these pieces out now sort of rotate the barrel as you do it to make sure you're not going in at any kind of funky angle and then you can see there that the pin just fits in just nicely. Just want to make sure you get the good depth and you can see that resin dust going everywhere. So I do recommend wearing some kind of face mask or have good ventilation in the room because this stuff isn't particularly nice to your health. You can see here just uh, drilling out these two. Try to go central barrel. I know there's a little sort of lug on each of these to try and make sure that you line it up on the main barrel system. But if you go in the middle you can't go too wrong. Now if they are slightly misaligned, when you come to push these into the rest of the uh, the main barrel of the weapon, and to be honest, if you're pinning any forge weld kit, if you do find and you've got enough surface area that your alignment is slightly out, you can just sort of widen the hole using that Dremel and drill piece a little bit more than you like, because then you can easily fill it with glue or uh, JB weld in this case and whatever, and it will just fill it out and then you won't have to worry about it. But that's just a, a little tip there while we fly through this video. 24 hours have now passed, give or take a couple of hours, and we are good to uh, start sort of unwrapping some of these pieces that we've done and make some more progress. As you can see, that weld has held these completely. There are still a few gaps, and we will come back and fill those with green stuff. As you can see, this other section, we're now ready to cut these uh, cable ties off and uh, get rid of that. As you can see, this is rock solid, and that's exactly what you want. But you still do get those gaps, and we will be filling those. But we now need to move on and drill out the main weapon system so that we can then attach the barrels. So out with the trusty Dremel once again, and we can drill those holes out. And again, we're looking for the center of these, even though they are slightly keyed. But if we go center, but I did say earlier, if you do find that you're not perfectly aligned, you can just make the hole a little bit bigger than three millimeters, give you that bit of wiggle room, and then the actual glue or the JB weld will cover the uh, indiscretion, shall we say. It just means that you've got more maneuverability and you can make sure that the parts line up 
if because this is this is quite difficult to really make sure that you get full alignment right so if you're a couple of millimeters out it won't be flush so you can always expand the hole and that just means that you can uh, get those barrels in without an issue again this does make a mess so do uh, have good ventilation and a mask and all that kind of health and safety advice that you should be taking and then just sort of clean this crap up once you uh, once you're done I've got a little tray thing that I'm using here just to scoop this resin uh, drill excess out into you just want to sort of make sure that everything fits now then make sure those holes are deep enough now one of those holes isn't quite deep enough because the pin on one of these was actually cut a little bit longer than the others so two barrels are good although one barrel is slightly banana shaped it does have a slight wobble in it or a slight bend in it so I do actually uh, off camera obviously because I'm not going to take my camera into uh, into the kitchen um, and just sort of uh, bend that back into shape Now I noticed that as I was sort of lining these barrels up and I kind of noticed that there was this kind of slight bend in them so I do uh, do go and deal with that but you won't see that on this video so if you do find that any parts are bent in fact uh, the two uh, armoured panels that go over the top of these there are a couple of warped parts in that so I'll be uh, dealing with those in exactly the same technique so hot water bath just under boiling water is always good and then a cold water dunk just to make sure that it hardens back up as I said these these holes weren't quite deep enough so I just needed to re-drill those just because that pin was slightly longer on one of those and that's the one that I was going to be using for the top barrel so just make sure that your holes are deep enough And that's much better see there we go uh, perfect fit now and then you can see just make sure all the other barrels are all good and at this point this is where I did notice that one of them was slightly banana but yeah. as always just make sure always test fit every single piece I noticed that there was a slight you know sort of lump on this one so where the JB world had held that pin in just need to cut and trim a little bit there just to make sure that the barrel does fit into the recess exactly as you require so just want to check all the others as well so there's a couple of little bits of bobbling going on where that weld has dried where I put the pins in using JB weld and obviously if you've got that sort of sticking up and proud around where the pin is then it won't sit perfectly flat into the recess where the uh, where the barrels meet the the rest of the gun so just cleaning up the rest of where that bubbling is then just to make sure that everything lies flat and we just sort of test fit and make sure everything is good before we uh, before we actually apply any weld or super glue. So pretty happy with the way that those barrels are now working. And as again, you know, with all Forge World kits, the, the finish really does get enhanced if you spend time doing this cleanup process. Now I know people that do throw these models together pretty quick and that isn't for me, right? So people that put them together, when it comes to painting, the quality of the paint job and the quality of the build is really reflected by the quality of the assembly so really spend time making sure that everything is as good as it's going to be because you're not going to get another chance to do this once you've started painting it so 100 percent test retest remeasure recut and continually do it until you are 100 percent happy before you progress to actually gluing or sticking anything together now as i said i did go away and rebend that one this one particular barrel did have a slight banana shape to it. It wasn't huge, only about sort of two or three millimeters, but I did run it under a hot tap and then just sort of force it and bend it slightly so it's a little bit better. Now exactly the same as with the other laser destroyer, there are two little lugs on two of the barrels. Well, there's lugs on all three barrels, but you only actually need one lug on one barrel. So I've just removed those other two lugs just for that uh, barrel spacer to work more effectively. I just sort of clear the desk away and then we can mix up uh, a little bit more JB Weld and then we can stick these barrels to the main weapon assembly. You don't need a huge amount of JB Weld just for this little bit, it is only three small sections so be a bit frugal if you want. As you can see I've, I sort of go a bit over the top with my JB Weld, it's, it's a bit of a leaky tube, it does sort of uh, force itself out under pressure but give that a good mix up until, until it turns grey and then you've got that right paste and then we could apply it to the barrel tips and again exactly the same as the one that I showed right at the very start that was partially built 
we can super glue the barrel spacer together. But obviously you need to do all three sections concurrently. So we need to get the glue onto the first uh, top barrel. Uh, that's the one that has the little lug on it. And then we can uh, make sure that all three go together at the same time whilst all the glue and the JB Weld starts to go off. With everything ready to go, we can apply the JB Weld and this is where I'm sort of pushing it in and around the pin because once that pin gets forced into its, into its socket, into its receiving pin hole, that JB Weld will squidge out and then form a good seal and a good adhesive. Now we just need to work relatively quickly here and making sure that we get all the barrels all on at the same time and then uh, we can hold them with those elastic bands exactly the same as we did with the barrels of the first one. So just getting that JB Weld, as I said, in and around the pins, a little bit of a dob, uh, dob and dab here and there, and then uh, apply the super glue to the barrel spacer, and then we can push those, uh, those two remaining barrels in and get everything all sort of squared away and aligned and uh, looking good. Now that third barrel going in now, and then just sort of making sure that we line up on that barrel spacer at the very top little bit of twisting, a little bit of turning, a little bit of fine tuning, making sure that everything is aligned. And then once we're happy, we can sort of hold it together with our hands for a little bit. And then we can uh, get those elastic bands on. Let's get the uh, JB Weld out of the way and just sort of, you know, give it that good bit of, uh, good bit of muscle and squidge it all together so it's exactly where we need it to be and then get those elastic bands on. And then we can take our hands away and not have to worry about holding it for too long. And there we go, all three barrels now on. Looks pretty straight to me. Uh, looking down sort of the length of the barrels, making sure that everything is as aligned as it can be. You don't want any sort of bananaing effect on here. So just uh, get some elastic bands on so that holds it in place. And just applying elastic bands a bit further down the barrels as well, just to give it a little bit more purchase and we can put that to one side. So we can go back to the original uh, laser destroyer now. We can start putting this on its mount and start adding the pistons and all that kind of stuff. Now I'm not going to be gluing these armor panels on, these top panels. You can see that that is slightly warped. That does need a little bit of work before we move on to that. But all armor panels will be left off to be painted separately. Now these pistons, you can adjust them so you can get a bit of variable height. You can see that it sort of rotates in the little socket there. And all you've got to do is just sort of guess really where you want these to be. Now I did mention earlier you could really pin this uh, so that you can have fully adjustable heights if you pin it in three positions, uh, but then you would need to rubberize those hoses. Now there are third party companies that do produce sort of rubbered hoses so that you can move them around and they are flexible. I'm not overly fussed about adopting that for this particular part of the model. You know, the weapons are just there to look very, very cool and destroy cities and other titans. I'm not really fussed about them having to, you know being able to have them moved so I've glued the pistons in the positions that I want you know the or the piston receiving housing and the actual pistons just a little bit of test fit to make sure that we're all good and then we can apply JB weld again mainly to the housing here this is where the biggest join is is where that sort of rotating uh, section is in the main housing and then I'll super glue the actual pistons and the cables on shortly but just sort of make sure that you give it a good uh, good coat exactly where the connections are. And if there is a little bit of wiggle room, put a little bit more JB Weld in so that it does fill out that gap for you when you push these together. Now I've put that JB Weld towards the back so that when these two pieces do come together and it sort of squidges together a little bit, it doesn't sort of seep out and become visible and require uh, further filing or cutting away. So just get the uh, super glue out ready. Uh, again, once a, before I've done the super glue, I have keyed those parts, so I've given them a good little scrape and a scratch with the scalpel, and then just apply the super glue in the relevant sections uh, for where those pistons go. Now we can squidge that in, and whilst we're doing that, we get the pistons all lined up, and then we can sort of hold it together, just give it a few uh, couple of minutes held, and then it basically will hold itself on its own weight at this position now. So. Just want to make sure that everything is all good before I sort of put this to one side and allow it to fully dry. So I'm pretty happy with the position that everything's in there. Everything's looking good. 
Tempted to try and clamp it, but actually it's a little bit too awkward. There's too much detail and, and bits and pieces sticking out, so didn't go with that. But just sort of testing it here does actually feel like it's going to hold on its own weight. So happy with that, so we can actually get the, the uh, side cables on. The position of this actually was quite fortunate that I didn't have to heat bend these cables. There's a slight uh, extension of the cable. I did have to bend it a little bit, but there was enough flex in the cable uh, resin itself to not have to worry about having to heat bend and uh, move those about. Just happened to be a bit fortunate there. So just do the other side and then that laser destroyer is then complete other than obviously the armor panels, which as I said, always paint those separately. And with the other laser destroyer fully uh, dried, I was able to then apply the pistons to that one and the, uh, the cables as well. And both are now complete, other than those top panels. And this is what they look like. These things are massive. And the other one is, you know, I've left the elastic bands on whilst those barrels are still going, but you can see that I've applied it into the, uh, into the housing, into the rotational housing to go on the shoulder and applied the pistons and so on and those two laser destroyers are now ready to be cleaned before priming. Now what are these things that look like on the chassis itself? So I've just gone ahead here, these, these top sections aren't glued so the, uh, the armour panels and the, the weapon receiving holes are not glued on, this is just for show and you can see here, I mean that one doesn't quite you know, self balance, I will be magnetising these, they will have magnets in so they do lock in place under their own weight and magnetism but you can see here just attached to the torso this is exactly where they go so there we go then guys that is uh the warlord titan progress update number three so those shoulder cannons are, are now assembled other than the armor plates obviously because i'm going to be painting those separately the torso is mostly assembled the large box pieces assembled there's still all of the armor plating mounting parts and the close weapons systems so the mauler bolt cannons and the last cannon still to go on there uh, other bits and pieces still need a little bit of filling here and there but we'll keep moving on and i'll keep updating you if you keep on watching uh, but thank you very much hope you enjoyed the video if you did don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i shall catch you on the next video